Chocolate is great. It gives you energy, which can be used to go buy more chocolate. That was a funny quote, you know, that we just saw, isn't it? By the way, what is your source of energy? A bar of chocolate? A delicious heavy milkshake? An hour of your favorite sport, say tennis or football? Whatever might be your go-to thing, it either gives you physical energy or it mentally refreshes you. But what does energy or an energy source mean when we enter the world of science? That is what we will learn in this video, where we begin the chapter on sources of energy. We know very well that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. We also know that the total energy in the universe always remains constant. But if total energy remains constant, shouldn't we be able to use it endlessly without thinking or worrying about running out of it? Why do we hear so much discussion, especially on global platforms about the energy crisis? This riddle can be solved. If you recall what else we've learned about energy. You see, energy comes in different forms and one form of energy can be converted to another. However, over the last hundred years, the world's population has increased in how? Today, we have nearly 7 billion people walking around on our planet Earth. And that's a lot of people. But let me tell you this. This growth in population is not the reason for the energy crisis situation. The problem lies in our energy consumption patterns. So let's begin by understanding the sources of energy to better analyze the need for conserving our Earth's energy. So to start off simple and straight, our world depends on energy. Our lives are powered by a variety of natural energy sources. Natural resources are useful raw materials that we get from the Earth. They occur naturally and are not man-made. Instead, we use and modify natural resources in ways that are beneficial to us. We use electricity to run the appliances in our homes. We use fuels to run our vehicles. In each of these examples, we take a source of energy to do some work. In other words, we can say that once a source of energy is consumed, it cannot be used again. Therefore, a good source of energy would be one which gives an output of a large amount of work per unit, volume or mass. Second, it is easily accessible. Third, which is easy to store and transport. And fourth, perhaps most importantly, which is economical. On the basis of these factors, natural resources are classified as conventional resources and non-conventional resources or alternative resources. Let's study both these classes in detail one by one. So let's start with conventional or traditional sources of energy. These sources are known to most people. For example, wood, fossil fuel, dung cakes, etc. Now these are also known as biotic resources because they are obtained from living things or organic materials. Let's discuss the most commonly used conventional source of energy that is fossil fuels. Now fossil fuels also include coal, petroleum, oil and natural gas. Fossil fuels are classified as biotic resources because they were formed from the remains of living organisms that were buried millions of years ago. Also fossil fuels are a non-renewable source of energy because it takes several thousand years for them to develop characteristics of fuels. And by non-renewable, I mean that if we use them all up, we can never get more during our lifetime. Coal, petroleum and natural gas are all fossil fuels. And to avoid encountering a day where mankind would have run out of these important fossil fuels, alternative sources of energy were explored. Now coal, as we all know, is a complex mixture of compounds of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and some free carbon. When coal is heated, the carbon present in it reacts with the oxygen of air to produce carbon dioxide. Now this reaction 
is highly exothermic, which means a lot of heat is produced during the burning of coal, which makes it an excellent fuel. The amount of heat produced by burning a unit mass of the fuel completely is known as its calorific value. Alternatively, we can see that the amount of heat produced by burning one gram of fuel completely is called as its calorific value. The calorific value of coal is 25 to 30 kilojoules per gram. Another method of using coal is to convert it into some other forms of energy, such as coal gas or coke. Coke is nothing but 98% carbon. Coke is a better fuel than coal because it produces more heat than an equal amount of coal and it does not produce smoke while burning. Moving on, petroleum is a dark colored viscous oil composed of several solid liquid and gaseous hydrocarbons. Thus, crude petroleum is not one single chemical compound, it is a mixture of compounds. Fractional distillation of petroleum gives us the following fractions which can be used as fuels. So, petroleum gas, petrol, diesel, kerosene and fuel oil are all examples of this. Petroleum gas is a mixture of butane, propane and ethane. But the main constituent of petroleum gas is butane. All three constituents of petroleum gas are gases. Hence, it can be compressed. Thus, petroleum gas, which is stored in liquid state under pressure, is called as liquefied petroleum gas. Now, we all know petroleum gas is mainly used as yeah, LPG for domestic purposes. Moving on to the third fossil fuel, natural gas. Now, natural gas mainly consists of methane and small quantities of ethane and propane. It mainly occurs deep under the Earth's crust, formed due to the decomposition of vegetable matter by lying underwater. Now, natural gas is generally used as a domestic and an industrial fuel. Recently, compressed natural gas, commonly known as CNG, is also being used as a fuel in transport vehicles, you know, buses, taxi cabs. Lastly, natural gas is used as a fuel in thermal power plants for generating electricity. So let's see how these fuels are used to produce electricity. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.